Whether it's writing novels about politics or uncovering secrets on his hit TV show, Brad Meltzer knows a good story. His latest books are the thriller The Inner Circle and Heroes for My Son, a book celebrating people we can all look up to. Brad Meltzer, nice to have you here this morning. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm totally fascinated by the inner circle and the way a lot of things came together, especially by the fact that at one point, um, the Department of Homeland Security called you and said, hey, could you come in and work with us on a project? We need you to think about how terrorists could attack us. Yeah, they called and said, will you come and brainstorm different ways terrorists will attack the United States? And my first thought was, if the Department of Homeland Security is calling me, we have bigger problems than anybody <laughs> thinks, right? I was like, this is a disaster. But I was honored to be part of what they call the Red Cell Program. And it brings together out-of-the-box thinkers to brainstorm different ways terrorists can kill us. And they read my novel, saw I do things like the secret tunnels below the White House and things like that. But I said, where does that come from? Why'd they pick me? Right? Why do they pick a regular, ordinary person? And I looked through history, and it traced back to a guy named George Washington. And George Washington had his own spy ring, a secret spy ring made up of regular, ordinary citizens. And he said, because no one will look twice at them. Mm -hmm. And I said to my guide, Homeland Security, wouldn't it be cool if in my next novel, in the inner circle, you found out that George Washington's spy ring still exists today? And he says to me, what makes you think it doesn't? And I said, what are you talking about? He says, it's one of his great success stories. Why would he ever disband it? And I said, that's the novel I want to write. It's absolutely fascinating. I, I do have to say that one of, the, one of my favorite things that just came out of your mouth was my guy at Homeland Security. Yeah, no, it's fun. Well, <laughs> I, I have a be my better guy was, I, I, when I was researching the book, I called um, former President Bush Sr., mm -hmm. who had written me a book, and he liked some of my novels. And I said to him, sir, uh, I read a story that Ronald Reagan, during his last moments in the White House, slipped a little note into the White House, the Oval Office desk, a secret note for you. And then you slipped a secret note for Clinton in there, and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. up to Obama. And I said, could I use, sir, um, those secret notes to pass information from each president for my novel? And he wrote me back and said, the president wants you to have this. And I don't know what it is. And I opened it up. And he sent me the secret note that he wrote to Bill Clinton and no one had ever seen before. A copy of it. A real copy of it. And he sent it to me. And he said, I've never shown this to anybody. It was just an amazingly gracious letter. But it gave me ideas that I used in the inner circle of what one president and how they communicate with the other. And you've had a really interesting connection, too, not just to um, the first President Bush, but you've also heard from former President Clinton. I mean, you have some big fans uh, in the White House and former White House residents of, yeah. your, of your book. And, and that's nice, and it's nice to be invited to the White House, and it's nice to have lunch there. But there's nothing um, like having your family root for you, I will mm -hmm. say it very honestly. Um, and, and, and this sort of ties in, too, to one of your, your main beliefs in life. I know that it's ordinary people who, who really do extraordinary things, who make the world go around, people like your mom, who you know, other people may not have known. And that's essentially what this, this circle was. Yeah. Um, no, I, listen, my belief is ordinary people change the world. Yeah. And that is what matters. And when my son was born 10 years ago, I said, I'm going to write a book for him to show him that. And then a friend of mine told me this amazing story about the Wright brothers, that every time the Wright brothers went out to fly their plane, they would bring enough extra materials for multiple crashes, which means every time they went out, they knew they would fail. And they would crash and rebuild and crash and rebuild, and that's why they took off. And I said, I love that story. I want my son to hear that story. I want my daughter to hear that story. I want everyone to know that if you dream big and you work hard, you can do anything in this world. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's what Heroes for My Son is going to be, a book of not rules, but a book of heroes. And the most important hero in there, listen, Jim Henson's in there, mm -hmm. Mr. Rogers is in there, and Rosa Parks is in there, Martin Luther King Jr. is in there. But the most important person to me is my mom in the end. Such a treat to have you here. I know you're also working on uh, <laughs> Heroes for My Daughter. I am. With a little uh, prompting, so no, we'll I appreciate looking it. My, for that Well, one. my daughter said to me, uh, Brad, Dad, where's my book? Yeah. So it's done. It comes out Mother's Day. We're going to be doing it. And then we do Decode it every week and love doing that. So we, we get to play a lot in history. Good. Well, maybe we can make you come back for Mother's Day for that. I appreciate it. Great. Brad, really appreciate your time this morning. Thank, Thank you. you.